hopefully it won't put you guys to sleep. I know it's like 8 a.m., so you don't really want to hear this right now. But, um, and I'm in university too, so I wouldn't be up for like another two hours. So. Um, how much is your life worth? If you want to put a dollar value amount on your life, how much would you say your life is worth? And you can calculate it, think about it. If you want to say, um, start with little things, your iPod, your phone, then go a bit bigger, your Xbox, <laughs> your wardrobe, your bed, your house, your car, and then I'm going to make it a bit crazier. How about your hand? What value would you put on that? How about your parents' life? Best friend? So I think what you guys should be getting at, this is called a thought experiment, so it's basically just uh, theorizing some hypothetical situation to extract some type of theme out of it. I think the main thing to get out of this is that really the value of human life isn't in what you own or what you possess. It's more so in the people you know, your health, and, uh, and, and that's really more uh, valuable than any material wealth. So let's take this little guy in Barranquilla, Colombia. Okay, let's say his material wealth is two cents. Okay, now if you want to, hypothetically, Say everything I just listed is worth that much in dollar amounts, okay? So your parents, your house, your life, your wealth, everything. Now it's pretty low to put a number on that stuff, but just take it and uh, think about it. If you add this guy's, uh, this little kid's two cents that he owns, and add whatever you own, okay? You'll find that the difference isn't really that much. So what we're talking about here is that our lives aren't worth much more than people who don't really have nothing. Because the main idea is that life is not valued at how much you have or what you have, but rather in its own essence itself. Now, I don't think you guys have that big number at the top, so you probably would go to Blake Lux, so you probably don't have that much. <laughs> Shut up, I want you to. So, so the thing you get at is, um, I think people usually go and go to just uh, tell you, oh well, it's a hopeless world, you know, everything's uh, disastrous, no one cares, I uh, can't do anything about it, and it's 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 true in a sense, it is a sick world, but good people do good things every day. So uh, I think the real problem is what we see as desensitization. So you guys see the same images of the poor African babies with flies around them on TV and you see the same images of uh, people in war and torn villages crying over their, their babies and and it's gotten to the fact that literally you guys it doesn't like it doesn't even affect us that much anymore because you're just so used to seeing it over and over on the news like we got used to seeing messed up things so it takes us to this point right here is that People would rather not be bothered by something that is going to guilt trip them maybe, or make them uncomfortable, or make them want not want to think about whatever is going on that would bother them. So this is sort of a theme that's always been in history, and it's going to stay for the rest of humanity because this is how we are. People would rather go for a reassuring lie than know an inconvenient truth. And this goes for many things. We're talking about global issues right now, so this is uh, this is mainly talking about awareness right here. That people would rather not preoccupy themselves with what's going on around the world, all the messed up news that's happening, because really you'd rather just turn a blind eye and go on with your life about it. So I'm here to tell you why you should not do that. This is what old people probably do to you guys. So. People always accuse young people of not knowing anything, of not being aware, of not being educated. And it's true in a sense, but you know, let's try it out. Let's play it around. Um, who knows who Canada's foreign minister is? What's his name? <coughs> okay, let's just back up a bit. Who knows what a foreign minister is? <laughs> <laughs> no one knows Canada's foreign minister. That's fine. No, who knows there's an American election this year? Okay, nice. 
Who knows that the Greek economy is the fastest growing economy in the world? I got you all. It's pretty much the worst economy right now. <laughs> so, so, so really, we, 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 are, we are aware of certain things. Um, we're aware if we want to. Some people are really uh, into these things. And honestly, it's not, you guys aren't supposed to be political experts. You're not supposed to be economic experts. That's not your job. But uh, it is important to have like some type of minimal, uh, minimal level of awareness so that um, you're not totally <laughs> like a, a blind member of society. Basically, this is the time for you guys at this age. This is when uh, you're developing your thinking skills. This is when you're developing your critical analysis skills. This is when you start questioning things. And if, if, you, don't, if you don't build that, all that now, usually what ends up happening is you'll end up being one of those people in the reassuring lie line and not the inconvenient truth. So develop your, your thinking now. Develop uh, your, uh, your, uh, your awareness of uh, as much as you can. And again, so what you guys always end up doing is, um, well, I can't do anything. You know, at the end, we, we uh, get to the conclusion, yeah, sick world, messed up world. But I can't do anything. I'm just in high school, and I have you know, things to do. Um, so Playmakers is, uh, is something, uh, an idea that friends and I started, they're right here. Um, basically, it functions on the idea, uh, it's a charity. It functions on the idea that we were in, we just graduated from high school, and we thought we wanted to do some type of thing of good to uh, a benefit to people. And we thought we didn't have that much resources. We didn't have money. We didn't have uh, you know, a truckload of contacts. Uh, so we thought we would use um, sport okay, to, to combat some of the world's problems. So 2009, we started it. And sports are really uh, a universal language that everyone speaks. So our mission basically functions around namely two things. The first one is improving quality of life through sport. And the second one is uh, to set aside differences and unite the international fragmented community through sport as well. So I'm going to take you on a tour right now around the world. It's not a good tour. It's a pretty ugly tour. But um, I think uh, it is necessary to know. This is an ambulance. It doesn't have four wheels. It has four people. Four people are Olympic bodybuilders. The four people are school children, and this is uh, in Central Africa. This is necessary because the villages, to get someone who is sick over to a doctor, over to a village who has a doctor, usually a semi-qualified doctor, not even a real one, uh, you'd have to walk miles with the person on your back to take them to get treated. This is not a sewage facility, it's not a garbage dump. This is an actual village in India, one of the lowest sanita sanitation uh, records in, in the entire world. People actually live here and sleep here. But you guys think your school's poor? <laughs> this is a school in Eastern Africa. Outdoor classes every day, that's the positive. <laughs> this is in uh, Brazil. So these kids have to go get water every day because their homes don't have connected water facilities. And they have to go get water and basically they would use these kilograms of water for the entire day and the next day they'd have to go and get more water so they have water for the next day while their parents uh, get food, while their parents work. And this is their everyday reality. Usually what you'd have to sacrifice for something like this is school. You wouldn't learn. Um, you'd basically just be focused on living. And of course, the health issues. Six-year-olds are not meant to be carrying kilograms of uh, water on their backs. So, now that you're all nice and depressed, um, if we can't fix all these problems, then what do we do then? So, is it is it are we just supposed to, you know, freak out and and just well, it's a sick world and start crying about it because there's nothing else to do? No, you can actually start um, contributing in whatever you want. I was a sports guy. I thought. The idea was, let's use sport. And here's why. Sport really is magic. It doesn't matter uh, who you are. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how poor you are. It has the same effect on you. Because when kids make uh, this ball right here out of socks and elastic bands, 
they have exactly the same amount of fun as you do playing outside here. So this is one of the most um, like life touching things that will happen to someone in one of these communities is that they get a sense of enjoyment, they get um, they get a, a, a sense of childhood uh, through sport, through playing, just like you guys uh, uh, really ha needed to play in your life as a growing up child. Some of these are really cool now. They make things like this. It's a teeter totter. This one is awesome. <laughs> That's a pool table. Foosball. Not only quality of life, but like I told you, our mission statement works uh, uh, in two ways. Those aren't um, just random naked people hugging. <laughs> That's two uh, soccer players exchanging jerseys after a match. Um, and you see in sports something that you don't see anywhere else in the world, basically. And it's you can see two countries who were at war with each other for years, and then you can see them playing together. So it's, it's really amazing in that sense. Um, you have uh, entire teams that consider each other families, and you'll know this if you play sports competitively, um, with all sorts of different people that you have no relation to whatsoever. Different, not only different colors, but like different religions, different beliefs, different uh, backgrounds. Uh, this is the French national squad. Doesn't get more diverse than that. Um, you know, in the NBA, Houston Rockets, you got everything right there. Who knows what this is? Justin Trudeau versus that other guy. That yep. Did. So this was a this was a, a charity boxing match. Uh, that's Justin Trudeau. Uh, he's a member of parliament, and that is Patrick Rosell, and he is a senator in Quebec. And um, they laced up, and they. Um, went into the ring for three bouts for a, char for a charity run for cancer. And um, they actually fought. <laughs> um, it was, so again, innovative way of using sport for good. Again, so this summarizes what I said. Um, it's, it pretty much has a, a very wide range of, uh, of, of, of touching uh, people's lives in different ways. And it's, it's free, it's sports, it's playing. Uh, how about a future? Who knows who this is? You? Who said you? It's not me. It's Ronaldinho, one of the best players in the world, who grew up playing in the slums of Brazil, playing soccer. So for some people, it's a way out as well. So what do we do in Playmakers? Um, uh, First of all, our major event is going to be Spirit of Sport Festival. So this is going to be next next summer for the first time. And this is going to be basically, um, uh, we're going to have celeb athletes, we're going to have musicians, we're going to have live competitions, sports competitions in the streets. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, second thing we run is something called I Am Playmaker, which is um, basically youth like you guys who have an idea, who want to run something, who have an idea for some event and we give them the resources uh, and everything they need to run such, uh, such a, an idea. So like, like I told you, so Playmakers is sort of a dualistic approach. What we thought of was that it's an idea. It's not, it's not, we don't like to think of it as an organization. We like to think of it as an idea. Is that we want to instill our mission in as many people's hearts as we can. Make, uh, make use of sport and to make other people use whatever skill sets they have to apply them to, to, to in some innovative way to try and help people. Like for me, I was a sports guy, so I chose that this was my uh, my way of helping. For you guys, everyone will be different. So you got to think about what uh, what your skill set is, what your profession will be, what you want to do. And take all that into account. Okay, so if you want to look at a, a broad overview now of what we just said, um, is that first of all what what really gets to me is that we, in 2012, and you guys may not know this, you may not uh, like to know it, but in 2012, we actually have the resources, the technology, and the capabilities to eradicate poverty worldwide. Everyone, worldwide. It's not gonna happen, obviously. Um, 
but it's reality. We can. Um, why it's not, of course, is uh, you know, world leadership, greed, things that aren't going to change. But um, realistically, it's not up to you to, to, to be depressed about it. It's up to you to do your part and forget about the results. The results aren't on you. As long as you do whatever you, whatever you can and you feel like you've actually done something well, then that's all that's important. Who saw the first world hashtags problem? That's first world hashtag problem is really funny. So basically, um, if you want to compare our problems to, uh, to, to, to most of the world, they're very pathetic. And it's really funny because um, there's actually a hashtag that went on Twitter and uh, it's called first world problems. And people would tweet something. It's ridiculous, like a ridiculous problem. Like, I don't know if I should get wasted on Friday or go to like Niagara and get wasted also. <laughs> like that is a first world problem. So, um, uh, so and, it's, and it's really true actually. Like in America, we in America have, there's dogs on Prozac. Like I'm not kidding. <laughs> there's actually dogs on antidepressant drugs. Dogs don't need Prozac at all. Humans need food if anything. So uh, in this sense, uh, we really need to take our problems into perspective. Um, the other thing is, um, I don't think people are evil. I don't think most um, most people, I don't think you guys don't care about anyone. I don't think you guys um, are terrible people who just want their own good and don't really care about everyone else. Um, you know, there's some world leaders who actually are like that, so um, we have to be aware of that. But um, it's on us as a people uh, to not get lost in media, to not get lost uh, in politics, and uh, go back to humanity, basically. Go back to your basic principles, go back to your basic values. And I'm pretty sure that most of you would agree that living a normal life, you know, getting just a good job, getting a good education, getting a nice family, getting some nice kids, and then dying is pretty lame. <laughs> and. Um, that's fine if you like that. That's fine. But I think I think everyone would agree that that we're living for something a bit more profound than that. That we're living for something uh, a bit more meaningful than that. And that a life worth living really, um, if you leave something on earth after uh, your life that has helped people, that's something. That's a life worth living. And. Uh, to, to, to conclude, I'd like to say that for this generation, I think you guys are um, I think you guys are really underrated. I think we have a lot of um, we have a lot of tools that our parents didn't have, a lot of technology our parents didn't have. Um, we have a lot of time. Um, I think I think people uh, underestimate you guys, and um, you really are empowered in, in in the time you're living in right now. And um, take it into perspective, and uh, and really don't don't don't. Don't get depressed about things and, and just uh, you know get lost in all this like pictures and stuff I showed you. That's true. It's all reality. But um, you know, do your part. Like I said, forget about results. As long as you do what's on you and you feel like you've done something, forget about the results. <clears throat> so this picture speaks volumes of what I've been talking about, basically. Um, so the world doesn't come with borders drawn on it. We did them, because we like to separate people. Um, and I'll tell you this a bit in a few seconds, but um, you know, get, to know, get to know the world you live in, outside your city, outside your country. Um, it's really important. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll learn more than anything in your life from traveling. OK, so. Take home points, last day. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so um, I told you contribute within your expertise, um, things you like, things you're good at. Uh, that'll be the stuff you'll be successful in, and that'll be the stuff that you will have some type of way of contributing to your society, to, to the people in need. Um, question everyone. This age, just question everyone. <laughs> your teachers, your parents, um, uh, things you hear on the news, uh, things you read on the internet, question everything. And it's not empty, uh, you know, 
uh, questioning and empty arguing. No, just actually critically analyze things, question uh, everything, some, everything people tell you. Um, speak the truth, even if it's ugly, uh, even if people don't want to hear it, speak the truth. Have integrity in what you do. Be a voice for the voiceless also. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's, that's a really important uh, value to have. And the last thing, if you're going to take one thing out of my whole talk, is this. Travel, 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 travel. If you travel a lot, you won't even need to hear my whole talk I just said, because you will get everything I just told you a million times better than anyone will ever put in words from traveling. Um, when you travel and you go to a place where um, you're the different one, uh, if you are blonde and white and blue-eyed and you go to Malaysia, believe me, you'll be walking around like there's spotlights on you. So it really puts into perspective um, the idea, first of all, of normal, of, uh, of the relativity of what normal is. It's just basically in relation to whatever your environment is. Um, you'll see many different people. You'll see, um, this is of course aside from the, the beauty of traveling, uh, visiting new places. Basically, you will learn more than anything, more than reading, more than seeing anything. Traveling is the best way I've ever seen in my life. I have experienced of, of, of first-hand learning. So go everywhere. Go, go to Europe, go to Africa, go to Asia. If you can, make this like your number one priority in life, to travel everywhere. And um, of course, do as best as you can to try and volunteer somewhere, maybe even once in your life. You go abroad and, and work with kids uh, in an underdeveloped area. Believe me, the smile you see on, on that little kid's face, it's freaking awesome. So that's all for me. Um, uh, this is uh, Quinn Durant, he's our executive director of Playmaker. So he's gonna tell you about the, um, we're doing a jersey drive here in, at a bunch of high schools. Uh, like a sports jersey drive, so I'll tell you about that, and I'll tell you also about if you want to get involved uh, with Playmakers. All right, thanks, all guys. Well, it's, it's actually kind of weird being back here. I graduated, I think, four years ago now, so it's, it's kind of exciting being back at Blake Hawk, kind of nerve-wracking at the same time. So I'm just going to keep this really quick. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys about the Jersey Drive today. Um, there's a lot that we can do. Uh, obviously, we have big dreams for this charity. Uh, we eventually want to be going international, um, traveling, like Ahmed said. Uh, but right now, we have to keep it locally driven, and we're going to do a lot of fundraisers that are locally based. So this is where you guys come into play. So just as a show of hands, how many of you have played some kind of organized sport ever? <laughs> Majority of you. OK. Now, how many of you uh, played soccer? How many of you guys have just spare jerseys lying around your house? Great. Now, do you guys usually wear those? Like, honestly? That's what happens. No? Yeah, Mr. Payne, you wearing yours? No? All right, cool. Um, I want, there, there's so much that you guys can do just by bringing in those jerseys. And that's something very easy that you guys can do. And it, and it provides so much happiness to someone else in the world. So. Um, we encourage that, we're not sure which council is going to be doing it, but there will be boxes throughout Blake Lock for you guys to bring in your jerseys. Um, and we highly recommend that you guys just bring them in and do something good for the day, do your good deed of the, good deed of the day. Um, and other than that, um, that's pretty much the end of this presentation. I'm not sure if Mohammed has any more tools and comments. But, oh, uh, I don't have anything to do. We're sticking around here if you guys want to talk, if you want to give us your contact and get involved with us. That's it. Otherwise, uh, that's it, so thank you. Thank you.